most of the low pass filters that you can buy for amateur radio have a cutoff of 30 megahertz. The idea was that if you connected them in the antenna line of an HF transceiver, then that would reduce the chance of harmonics from your rig causing interference to TV sets. That's fine if you're using just below 30 megahertz, like 27 or 28 megahertz, but if you're using frequencies like 3.5, 7 and 14 megahertz, then you can't rely on just this filter alone to clean up your transmitter if its output is dirty. In this case, you need filters with other cutoff frequencies, a little bit above what you're transmitting on. In this video, I'll describe a low pass filter for 3.5 and 7 megahertz. It's switchable, so you can use it in line with a dual band transceiver. It could be useful in cleaning up QRP rigs that don't have particularly good harmonic suppression on their own. This circuit diagram might look a little bit complex. So we'll just make a change like this and it becomes your familiar Pi network. The component values here affect the cutoff frequency of the filter. It will offer little attenuation to signals below its cutoff frequency, but high attenuation to signals appreciably above it. It won't fix all transmitter problems, but it's suggested as a precaution if your rig is putting out harmonics, i.e. if it's supposed to be putting out 3.5 MHz, but you're also getting outputs on multiples like 7, 10.5, 14 megahertz, etc. This particular filter has two sections. The top section you can see here is just a standard Pi Network low pass filter for 3.5 megahertz or 80 meters. The other section, although it is drawn upside down so you might not be used to that, is a low pass filter for 7 megahertz. Build them in the same case and have a switch and you've got a switchable filter which may be convenient for many QRP projects. You may wish to use a male connection on one side and a female on the other. That saves the need for a jumper cable. Having a look inside and the first thing you notice are what look like fat resistors. They're RF chokes, which form the inductors used in this filter. They can probably only put through one or two watts, so they're okay for low power QRP type applications and also receiving. But if you wanted more power, then I'd be substituting them. For instance, you could use an appropriate number of turns on iron powder toids, such as the red T50-2, or the yellow T50-6. You can get formulas for inductances and the number of turns required on the web. I'm using two 1 microhenry inductors for the 40 meter section and for the 80 meter section two 2.2 microhenrys. As for capacitors I'm using polystyrene. Polystyrene or mica capacitors are good for low pass filters. You could use disc ceramics, which are cheaper and more easily obtainable. However, they aren't as efficient, and filters built with them tend to exhibit more loss. I'm using a double pole double throw switch to change the band. The centre connection on each half goes to the input or output socket. The outside connections are used for each filter section. Here's a test jig to prove the filter works. A whisper light on 7 MHz is our signal source. Its output is around 200 milliwatts. With the filter set to 40 meters or 7 MHz, that will offer little attenuation to the signal coming out as measured on the meter. But if we were to flick it to 80 meters, where it cuts off signals above 4 MHz, then the measured output should collapse. 7 MHz low pass, 3.5 MHz low pass. You can see the output power has dropped to almost nothing, proving the filter is successful in suppressing signals above its designed frequency. Another test is having the filter connected to an HF receiver. 
Band noise is quite evident, with the low pass filter on 40 metres switched in. That's not offering any attenuation. But switch it down to 3.5 megahertz and the noise is greatly attenuated. A low pass filter like this is a cheap and useful project for the QRP -er or amateur experimenter. Use it with those rigs that you don't dare to put on air because of their poor output circuitry. It's a particularly good companion to the Whisper Light Classic from Soda Beams because it has filters suitable for 10 and 14 megahertz but not for lower bands. So if you do want to use this on 80 and 40 meters, then you will need a filter like this. If you want to get the most from Amateur Radio, check out my eBooks. Minimum QRP, hand carried QRP antennas, and getting back into Amateur Radio. All have been favorably reviewed, and you can get them for a low price in electronic form. Visit my website, vk3ye.com, and follow the links, or search their titles in Amazon.